Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first uh, informal talks, our first webinar for organized by the Research Network and Support Facility and EU-funded initiatives. Uh, I'm Paolo Carlini, I'm the team leader of the RNSF team, and today we have here Donatella Gobbi from uh, Unit P3-DEFCO, Professor Charm uh, Jacques, uh, he is our research expert, a statistician, economist, and director of the uh, research, the International Research uh, uh, Department uh, in Paris, and we have uh, also our communication expert, uh, Pierre Berman. I would give uh, the floor to Pierre just for a few minutes before we start, so he can explain. Uh, maybe our participants are already familiar to to the use with the use of uh, a webinar platform, but uh, I'm sure that Pierre is going to give you some tips uh, that are useful during this uh, event. Please, Pierre. So thank you, Paolo. Hello to everyone and welcome in this first uh, informal talks webinar dedicated to the informal economy. Um, there will be some presentation, then there will be a time dedicated to questions, if you have some. Um, to ask questions, you should be using the control panel that you should be seeing on your screen, uh, on your right. Uh, we'll give you two options to ask questions. One is the chat room, which you should see uh, a folder called chat in uh, the control panel, and you can ask questions anytime during the presentations. Uh, in that case, we will collect the question and give them to Paolo at the end of uh, the presentations. Then you have also the possibility at the end of the webinar to ask your question verbally. Uh, for that, you need to use the, future, the feature raise your hand. You should see on the control panel a small hand. If uh, you, when we will give you the possibility to, to speak, you should be raising your hand. Then I will se uh, select you and give you the, the microphone so that you can ask verbally your question. Uh, if you have any problem at any time during the webinar, you can contact me using the chat room. Uh, please note that at the end of the webinar, we will circulate documents that will be mentioned during the webinar, and that when you will leave the webinar, there will be an automatic satisfaction survey, let's call it that way, uh, so that you can give us your feedback regarding the, the webinar. I wish you a good webinar and do not hesitate to contact me in case you have any kind of problem. Okay, thank you very much, Pierre, for this brief introduction. So uh, let me introduce uh, our panelists. Today we have uh, Donatella Gobbi from uh, DEVCO, Unit B3. Uh, Donatella, you're still there? Maybe there is. Uh, there may be an issue. Not sure if she's there. Let's see. Uh, I say Donatella, she's um, a technical vocational educational training specialist working at uh, the unit uh, B3, who, the unit uh, department of employment in DEFCO. And we have also with us uh, uh, Professor Jacques Charme, who is an economist, a statistician, and he's the former director of the. Um, of research at the Institute of Research for Development, the IRD in Paris. And uh, he has been involved and we've been very lucky to have him with us in our research team. We've been very lucky to have him because he was, uh, he's been working uh, since 1975 uh, on the definition, the measurement, uh, and the understanding uh, of the informal sector, of the informal economy. And um, I think we have lost Donatella. Uh, I would propose to go ahead and then when she's coming back, maybe we, we will uh, have her uh, introduction. Um, the Research Network and Support Facility uh, is a project funded by the European Union, by DEFCO, and is a project uh, um, working on the informal economy at different levels. So from one side, we do research on uh, the informal economy, uh, with the aim also of producing knowledge that, must, can, that can be useful for, 
for informing the decision making process. Uh, at the same time, so we are also supporting, uh, we've been supporting um, 17 projects funded by the European uh, Union uh, under the thematic program Investing in People, projects funded in 2014, 2015. Uh, that somehow touched the issue of the informal economy from different, different perspectives. And um, we do also networking and dissemination and training uh, of the research material that we produce and of the good practices and recommendation that we could, uh, um, uh, we could find found in the, in the uh, projects that we supported. Uh, so, this first uh, webinar, uh, I say it's a first webinar because it's the first of a series of webinars dedicated uh, to the different topics of the informal economy. And in the future, uh, since we have been collecting and producing a lot of research material, a lot of information, and uh, it's a very complex uh, topic, we want to disseminate uh, information and knowledge at different uh, level of complexity. So we're going to use webinars in order to introduce key areas. Today, uh, this first webinar is dedicated to the definition, to defining the informal economy, and make some uh, clarity on the terminology that we use. Then there will be other webinars dedicated to the different approaches and policies uh, of different actors. Then there will be other webinars dedicated to specific subtopics of the informal economy, like social protection, uh, which is a huge issue. How we can extend social protection to informal workers. And besides the webinar, we are going to also produce uh, an e-learning uh, course uh, divided in five uh, modules that will be available on uh, DEVCO Academy and on Capacity for Dev, where we have a group uh, uh, on the topic of the informal economy. And also, as I said, there, are, there is a lot of research material that we've been producing and will be made available in a digital form on a specific platform. So, let's start today uh, analyzing a bit uh, the topic of the informal economy, defining the informal economy. And uh, Jacques, uh, I would start, uh, since there is a lot of uh, confusion sometimes on the terminology, we listen to informal economy, informal sector, uh, informal workers. Uh, uh, what do we mean? with uh, the, the terms of informal economy. How uh, can we define a bit better the informal economy? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, before coming to the details of uh, the international uh, definitions, it is uh, uh, first necessary to overcome a commonly shared misunderstanding. Uh, the informal economy is not equivalent to illegal economy or to the shadow economy. As it is uh, clearly written in the preamble of the international definition of the informal sector adopted in uh, 1993, those activities are not operated uh, with the deliberate intention of evading the payment of taxes uh, or social security contributions, or infringing labor or other legislations or administrative provisions. Uh, maybe this is uh, difficult to understand uh, for, um, for uh, the, the common uh, uh, people, but it means that these activities are not operated in the shadow or in the moonlight, but rather in the open sun. And in fact, in Kenya, where the uh, concept of informal sector was born at the beginning of the 70s, uh, the usual term in the Swahili uh, used to uh, describe this reality is Juakali, uh, which means under the burning sun. So, uh, a common characteristic of all informal workers is, the, is that they suffer from the non-recognition of their civil and social rights. So, in fact, it is a, a little bit uh, more complex. Uh, the informal economy is comprised 
of uh, micro businesses that constitute the spontaneous economy um, and which includes all these activities that are part of the ordinary traditional way of life crafts small shops street vendors etc that pre-existed to the legal framework and the positive law and regulation uh, conveyed by the modernization and the globalization process. But the informal economy uh, is also as another face. It is also uh, comprised of workers uh, who are operating under harsh condition of work because they are undeclared, underdeclared or subcontracted by the formal firms. So depending on regions and countries, the former or the latter uh, is uh, predominating. So coming now to uh, the definitions, uh, we have definitions in terms of employment. And we have also definition in terms of national accounts. That is, is a, a measurement of GDP. In terms of employment, there was a first definition adopted in 1993 on employment in the informal sector. Then in 2003, a second definition was adopted on informal employment. And what we call employment in the informal economy is a combination of both definitions. In terms of national accounts, uh, the informal sector is a subsector of the household institutional sector. Now, coming to the 1993 uh, definition of employment in the informal sector. This definition was adopted by the 15th International Conference of Labor Statisticians. This conference, which is prepared organized and hosted by the International Labour Organization is in charge of the definition of labour force concepts, unemployment, underemployment and uh, informal employment uh, was on the agenda of this conference in 1993. So this definition of the informal sector is based on the characteristics of the enterprise within which the person work. So it comprised all unincorporated economic units, uh, uh, that is uh, neither corporations nor uh, institution, uh, non-profit institutions, but rather uh, per, uh, physical person, individual enterprises, uh, by their legal status. And the other criteria is that they are not holding a complete set of accounts. And if they employ permanent employees, it is under a given uh, a threshold of size, uh, which is five permanent employees and or uh, which are not registering those employees and or uh, economic units that are not registered. So these are alternative criteria that can be used altogether or only one of them depending on, on uh, the country. So this is the definition of employment in the informal sector. Now, because this definition of the informal sector was lim limited to micro businesses, uh, it failed to identify informal work in formal large enterprises. And this is why in 2003, the 17th uh, International Conference of Labor Statisticians uh, uh, proposed and adopted a second definition of informal employment. Uh, this definition is based on the characteristics on, of the job and not uh, on the characteristics of uh, the economic units. So uh, to put it in a nutshell, 
this uh, definition uh, states that um, the informal employment uh, define uh, the job uh, for which the holder is not benefiting of any social protection or which is not or uh, the holder is not contributing to uh, social protection by paying a social contribution. So this is the second definition adopted uh, in 2003, and it doesn't cancel the 1993 definition, but rather it comes to complement it. So finally, in summary, uh, what is it, the informal economy? It is comprised of micro businesses, such as small crafts, small shops, trade shops, operating in fixed premises. It is also comprised of uh, street vendors, mobile workers, home-based workers, construction and transport workers, who can work for their own account. And in this sense, they are also micro businesses, uh, or they can work uh, uh, under these forms as contractors and as employees. Uh, a third component is uh, paid workers in the formal sector, but who are not fully benefiting of their uh, social rights because they are not registered. And uh, a fourth component uh, is uh, the paid domestic workers in the households uh, that are not fully benefiting of their rights if they are not registered, and marginally uh, producers of goods for own final use, that is, for instance, subsistence farmers uh, who are not uh, selling uh, their uh, goods, uh, their products uh, on the market. So these are the various uh, types of uh, uh, the informal economy workers. Uh, a very frequent uh, question asked about, uh, <clears throat> about uh, the informal economy is whether it uh, uh, comprises agriculture or not. Of course, the informal economy includes agriculture and more broadly, all primary activities, that is animal husbandry, forestry, fishery, etc. But data collection is not well adapted for the ident identification of informal units in this sector. This is why the most common and recommended indicator for the measurement of employment in the informal economy is not counting agriculture. But definitely agriculture is part of the informal economy. So these are the main elements of uh, the definition definition of the informal economy uh, today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Jacques, for uh, this first uh, introduction. And welcome back to Donatella. I see that now she's online. And uh, I would proceed with the um, uh, speech of, uh, of Jacques, Donatella, and then at the end, uh, I will give you the floor so we can uh, close this first part. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we have just uh, seen, uh, thanks to Jacques, uh, how the phenomenon is complex and how there was also a need to adjust the definition of informal economy over time. We, we have seen this shift from a definition uh, based uh, on the, on the micro-businesses, on the unit, uh, economic units, uh, that was uh, uh, in a way uh, reflecting an image of the informal economy being composed by this uh, variety of micro-businesses in the street under the sun, as Jacques uh, told us, uh, with a shift uh, from this definition that was good, but in a way failed to recognize also uh, that informal workers, uh, they do work in uh, complex, uh, big enterprises, sometimes formal enterprises. Uh, we have seen uh, in the figures of the phenomenon, we have uh, informal work, uh, of course, in the formal sector, but also in the formal sector. 
so the complexity of uh, <coughs> of the the phenomenon is uh, very wide. And um, one th thing that I wanted to ask to Jacques is, uh, uh, what is the origin of the, uh, I mean, of the informal uh, economy? Sorry, not what is the origin. What is the dimension? Because we have seen that now it's very complex and it's very hard to define. And also in terms of indicators that we use, uh, we have sometimes. Uh, uh, difficulty in uh, identifying, uh, as example, informal business in agriculture. But uh, from your point of view, as uh, an economist and a statistician, well, what is the dimension of the phenomenon? Yes, uh, as you have understood from uh, my previous presentation, the informal economy has a double face. Uh, one uh, positive face is uh, the micro businesses that uh, blossom out uh, spontaneously uh, in order to allow people to earn uh, a living. And uh, another phase, which is more negative, uh, is uh, uh, these uh, informal workers that uh, don't benefit uh, of any social protection. And so initially, at the beginning of the 1970s, the concept of informal sector was coined to reflect the, um, the situation of rural urban uh, migrants and the jobs they spontaneously uh, occupied and created once in town. The, those people couldn't, could not afford open unemployment and they had to survive with petty, low paid jobs. This is the origin of the informal sector. Then the globalization process and the related international competition with the job relocations and outsourcing resulted into a rapid increase of workers hired or subcontracted under precarious condition of work. And this is the origin of uh, the informal employment in the formal sector. The two faces, positive and negative, of the informal economy. So, Thank you very much, Jacques. What we should remind for the, what follows is that there are two major components of the informal economy. The predominant component of micro-businesses, the informal sector, and the complementary component of informal employment in the formal sector. Thank you very much. And when we talk about the informal economy, I mean, how, how big is this phenomenon? I mean, how, what is the magnitude of this phenomenon? What are the, the latest figures that we have on, on the informal economy, on the dimension of the informal economy? A recent ILO estimate in 2018 shows that the informal economy provides employment to 61.2% of the global labor force. That is equivalent to 2 billion people working in the informal economy around the world. And 50.5% without agriculture. This is a recently released figure by the ILO. Uh, on, the, on the graphs that are on the slides, you can see that it is in sub-Saharan Africa that uh, the informal economy is uh, the most uh, uh, widespread in terms of non-agricultural employment, more than 73% uh, of total non-agricultural employment in sub-Saharan Africa. Then 65% or more in uh, South and Southeastern Asia, 57% uh, in Latin America, 48% uh, in uh, Northern Africa, and only 18% in transition economies, that is, these uh, Eastern European and the Central Asian uh, countries, um, uh, uh, that uh, left uh, uh, socialism uh, after the end of uh, um, socialism in those countries. Uh, the micro-businesses of the informal sector 
uh, as you can see on the second uh, part of the graph, uh, represent the bulk of the informal economy in, um, in uh, all regions. Uh, more than 80% and nearly 80% in Sub-Saharan Africa and South and Southeastern Asia, 64% uh, in Latin America, 58% in uh, uh, Northern Africa, and 50% in transition economies. So this is to, to highlight the importance of the micro-businesses in the whole informal economy. Now, uh, another important uh, uh, characteristics of the informal economy is uh, uh, the share of women in the informal economy. And as you can see, it is only in sub-Saharan Africa that women predominate uh, in uh, the informal economy with uh, 51%, followed by Latin America with 46%, uh, then uh, South and uh, Southeastern Asia with uh, 35%, transition economies with 33 and uh, Northern Africa with 16%. Of course, it doesn't mean that uh, the informal economy is less important for women. Uh, in fact, in many countries and in many regions, uh, for women, the informal economy is the most important provider of jobs. But uh, in total, as a world, they don't represent uh, the majority of the informal economy at world level. Now, in terms of uh, share of uh, GDP, uh, as you can see on the, those uh, two graphs, uh, the informal sector, not the informal economy in total, but the informal sector, including agriculture, uh, represents uh, more than 55% of total GDP in Sub-Saharan Africa and uh, more than 41% in India, 32% uh, in Northern Africa, 29% in Latin America and 18% in transition countries. Uh, it is not possible to have as many countries as for employment statistics in terms of GDP, unfortunately. This is why for Asia, we have only India. Now, if we exclude agriculture, and then it is not in terms of GDP, but in terms of gross value added, but it is a proxy for GDP, the informal sector is representing more than 41% in the Sub-Saharan Africa, 34% uh, in India, 26% uh, in Latin America, 24% in Northern Africa, and 15-16% uh, in transition uh, economies. This is for the informal sector only. Uh, the informal economy and uh, especially the informal wor workers of the formal sector are not counted in those uh, statistics. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the national accounts uh, do not distinguish uh, this, their contribution to the GDP. And uh, uh, it is only by indirect methods that we can take the measure of uh, this uh, Informal, the contribution of these informal workers to the, inf uh, to the GDP. Uh, last question about uh, the informal economy, and especially the contribution to GDP. Uh, we, we could ask whether uh, there is an informal economy in developed countries. As you have seen, the ILO estimates, uh, the global estimates by the ILO is covering also European and Northern uh, American countries, as well as Australia and New Zealand, etc., and Japan. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the problem is that in developing countries, the informal economy, and especially the informal sector, is recognized and uh, 
as an acknowledgeable part of the economy that is traditionally unregistered because of the inability of the state or the inadaptation of the legislation. But it is recognized and uh, very often supported by uh, policies in order to uh, promote and to, uh, to allow them uh, growing. In developed countries, and to some extent in transition economies, uh, the informal economy is assimilated to illegal work. And in fact, uh, the informal sector is completely hidden and clandestine. But this is why uh, uh, in, uh, in developed countries, those activities are not operated in the open sun, but in the moonlight. And so they cannot directly be measured by surveys. And so this is why the indirect estimates for the developed countries are uh, more difficult to compare with the direct estimates and direct surveys that are carried out in uh, uh, developing uh, countries. Thank you very much, uh, Jacques. It was, uh, it's been very interesting to listen to your presentation so far. Uh, we have seen uh, the huge contribution of the informal economy to uh, the wealth of a country. Uh, as you said, uh, almost 2 billion uh, people work in the, formal, uh, in the formal economy and there is a huge contribution worldwide to the GDP. Uh, although we have also seen the difficulties uh, of uh, measuring and finding uh, reliable data on, on the phenomenon and also some, some traps that we might have in trying to compare what we call informal uh, economy in developing countries and informal economy in the developed countries the question is uh, very, very different. Uh, I have another question for you, Jacques. Uh, now that we have seen that this phenomenon is huge and there is a lot of people working in the informal economy, uh, is it uh, a growing phenomenon or, uh, or have we managed to, to tackle the, the phenomenon and reduce the levels of informality? What is the situation? Well, this is a point that is uh, uh, more difficult to assess because, of course, uh, it is difficult to have uh, data uh, for uh, the previous uh, decade. The, the figure that I presented is for the most recent period, that is uh, the years, uh, uh, the 2010 uh, years. Uh, but in Sub-Saharan Africa, and especially in Northern uh, Africa, uh, we have uh, uh, some empirical evidence of growth in, uh, in the long term, since uh, the 1970s, actually. Of course, in absolute numbers, the informal economy is growing. Uh, it is growing uh, uh, as the labor force is growing uh, across the world. But data show that in all regions, uh, with up and downs, depending on the periods, uh, but uh, steadily, employment in the informal economy as a share of non-agricultural employment has increased until uh, the uh, financial crisis of 2008-2009. Mm -hmm. It is uh, really... <clears throat> interesting to observe this in all regions of the world. There is a peak in 2009. And since then, the statistics shows that it has been uh, decreasing. Uh, there, there was a downturn in 2009 um, that continues in Asia, in Latin America, and in Northern Africa, but that reversed uh, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa recently. So what, what we can say is uh, based on the latest, most recent uh, data on the informal sector and on the informal uh, economy, um, the, uh, 
the informal economy is uh, still growing in sub-Saharan Africa, but as uh, uh, the, the growth has uh, stopped in uh, the other regions, at least for the present period. So why it has been growing so rapidly uh, until uh, 2009, and uh, why it is uh, uh, still uh, at uh, such high levels in all regions. It is because in most developing countries, the youth population, and more generally the working age population, uh, is growing more rapidly than the total population. For, the, for demographers, uh, this means that uh, we entered into the stage of the demographic dividend or demographic bonus. But the, the demographic dividend is a bonus if governments and economies are able to provide and create jobs that are productive and inclusive. If associated with the low economic growth rates, then it is unemployment, underemployment, and employment in the informal economy that uh, rise up. Uh, structural adjustment programs uh, in the 1980s and in the 1990s that followed the oil and debt crisis have uh, exacerbated, uh, exacerbated uh, competition on labor costs and paved the, the way for a dramatic increase of informal jobs in the formal sector. So growth in the informal economy results from an increase in employment in micro businesses in the informal sector, as well as in subcontracted or not subcontracted informal employment in the formal sector. So the informal economy and its components follow pro-cyclical and contra-cyclical trends. When the economy grows, informal micro-businesses tend to grow as well, and informal employment in the formal sector tend to shrink. But when an economic crisis occurs, then micro-businesses are hurt as well, and informal employment in the formal sector absorbs the impact uh, on the formal sector. That is, the formal sector, in case of crisis, is firing, but these uh, fired employees uh, f find jobs either in the informal sector or in uh, the informal employment of the formal sector. So depending on regions and periods, uh, the growth of the micro-businesses component may compensate the drop of informal employment in the formal sector, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, where it is much larger. So, as you can see, the various components of the informal economy uh, are evolving, uh, following uh, different trends, depending on the economic situation in the country. Thank you very much, Jacques. And uh, I have one last question. Uh, we have seen that we have so many factors uh, uh, influencing the, uh, the trends of the informal economy and the growth or decrease. And, uh, and we have seen that the, the, how we design policy to tackle the informal economy is also a key and a very complex issue also. So uh, I, would, I, want, I want to ask you, um, we have listened a lot after 2015 to the recommendation uh, 2004 of ILO about the transition from the informal to the formal economy. So uh, I wonder, in your opinion, I mean, uh, if this uh, recommendation could be used as a conceptual framework for work, uh, what is the advantage of having this recommendation? what are possible limitations. So what's your point of view, your perspective on, on uh, the recommendation on the transition to the formal economy? 
Well, p policies addressing the informal sector are not new because they exist since uh, the concept uh, was coined in uh, the 1970s. And uh, uh, they are uh, generally uh, uh, they are generally uh, focusing on the micro businesses and on this part of the micro businesses uh, that is uh, uh, possibly uh, uh, growing. Uh, but it was only in 2015 that uh, the International Labour Conference uh, adopted at the unanimity of uh, its members, uh, the recommendation 204 on the transition uh, from the informal to the formal economy. And now countries, more and more countries, are in the process of designing policies addressing uh, uh, the informal economy uh, within the framework of uh, this uh, recommendation. And uh, this recommendation is a balance between uh, incentives and uh, uh, enforcement. Also, uh, this uh, 204 recommendation intervened uh, um, uh, at the same time that uh, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals were uh, adopted. And uh, uh, you remember that uh, one of the SDGs is uh, the achievement of uh, universal health coverage and more generally uh, a universal social protection uh, system. So countries are encouraged to, uh, to uh, adopt adequate policies to address uh, the informal economy for fighting against illegal work, but also for promoting micro businesses and encouraging uh, uh, those micro businesses to transit uh, towards the formal economy. And uh, this policy is uh, probably uh, will be the topic of uh, uh, next webinar. Yes, exactly, Jacques. Thank you for uh, very much. Uh, um, the next webinar will be dedicated to uh, analyze the different approaches and policies of different uh, stakeholders of different organizations, including uh, the ILO and including the recommendation uh, 204 uh, on the transition to the to the formal economy. Um, before uh, giving the um, the floor uh, to our participants, maybe they might have questions for you, Jacques. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, again uh, welcome uh, Donatella Gobbi from the UNIP3, uh, the Department of Employment, the DEFCO. Uh, she's been following our project. Uh, uh, in, uh, recently for the last uh, year and uh, she's been very supportive of the activity that we that we've been developing so far uh, she is wor working in uh, the area of uh, vocational training uh, specifically and uh, uh, today she is here in order to uh, give us uh, a bit the point of view of uh, DEFCON on, uh, on what we do as uh, as a in research and what is the, the purpose of these uh, initiatives and, and what is the interest of uh, the European Union uh, related to the informal economy. Welcome Donatella. Thank you, good morning. Uh, I'm sorry for this uh, technical <laughs> problem it's I okay. had. <laughs> so now it's okay. So uh, the research network and support facility has been created in 2015 uh, by our unit, B3, Employment and Migration, uh, to support the actors and implementing partners so involved in the Investing in People uh, thematic initiative. And in particular, those that have been selected from the call for proposals, empowerment for better livelihood for marginalized and vulnerable people uh, dependent on informal economy. 17 projects have been selected and the idea was to create a facility uh, for create a network among them and for learning more uh, from the experience. So th this facility that is, is uh, called RNSF, Research, Research Network and Support Facility, has three main objectives. One is uh, research, research on informal economy projects 
in particular using the experience of the 17 uh, selected projects, but also other projects have been uh, involved. Not only the 17, but also I think 32 from a previous call and other projects dealing with informal economy all over the world. Then the second objective is the networking and knowledge sharing of best practices, again, among the 17 uh, projects, but also others and other relevant organizations and international partners working in the field of informal economy. So we have broadened the audience and we have created this uh, platform or community of practice uh, called IESF. Uh, this is available in capacity for that. And then the third uh, objective was the support for the call for proposals projects. So the, I, I maybe um, I didn't specify that this call for proposals was, was published in 2014 and the projects were implemented from 2015 onward. So, uh, this support means uh, that we, will, we, we, we are providing tools for enhancing their capacity to assess the outputs, to analyze findings and also to maximize their impact because this is the, the, the main aim of this uh, thematic initiative. So, in three years of activities, the RNSF community of practices has grown up and uh, also has included several actors coming uh, uh, from uh, ILO, for example, from Vigo, from uh, different organizations, even from EU delegations all over the world and from the civil society. Uh, there are some civil society uh, organizations and uh, NGOs. And this webinar is um, somehow the result of the intense activities uh, of the RNSF actors and, uh, and also of a high quality research and analysis on informal economy that has been done uh, by the research uh, team of the project in these three years of activity. The team, uh, just to have an idea, has produced more or less 1,000 pages of uh, researches and analysis and findings. So uh, sometimes together with implementing partners because uh, the, the, the team also has produced two, two books uh, that are a sort of collective uh, exercise, uh, collective writing with the, with the implementing partners. So it was also quite interesting. So uh, the findings and materials have been uh, reorganized in order to provide a set of tools and uh, for uh, informing decision makers within the EU, uh, EU institutions, but also to, to inform all developing development cooperation partners, uh, practitioners, researchers, uh, implementing partners, or, or all over the world and dealing with informal economy. So why we did it? We are aware that in developing countries, a large share of population depends uh, for its livelihood uh, on the informal economy. And we know that despite substantial literature on this subject, on informal, mainly on informality in labor market, lessons learned by innovative projects, such as these projects in the field of informal economy, deserve particular attention and need to be shared. So this is the reason why we wanted to promote uh, these uh, research uh, uh, networking activities. Innovation deserve more attention and we, we would like to disseminate and to use lessons learned uh, from this project and, uh, and good practices developed in the field to, to work better, to work more and better and to deal better with informal economy issues that have an impact on all uh, our uh, on all uh, subjects on in, on, on uh, social protection, vocational training, which is my subject, on uh, all other on uh, social dialogue and uh, all other issues related with employment and livelihood in uh, in informal economy. That's it, Paolo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Donatella. Thanks for your. Uh your words uh, and uh, yes as Donatella was saying I mean we we've been pro producing uh, um, a lot a huge uh, research uh, uh, output and now what we are going to do and we have started just today doing this uh, with this first uh, webinar we're going to disseminate our material uh, at different level of complexity because what we realize is that sometimes there is um, a difficulty uh, uh, 
to uh, access uh, huge research material in the form of books. Also, we have books we are going to produce, uh, we have already produced book on, uh, on a specific topic related to the informal economy, and that was a huge uh, effort. But also, we are going to disseminate the material uh, in the form of webinars, in the form of an e-learning uh, uh, course that will be made available uh, on uh, our ISF group on capacity for dev, but also on uh, the uh, a new platform, training platform uh, the, of DEVCO, the DEVCO Academy. Uh, we are going also to uh, disseminate the research material uh, uh, in, digital, in a digital way uh, also on capacity for DEV. We will be opening a specific group where all the material will be digitalized and accessible online in, in an easier way compared to reading a hundred page maybe of a of a report or of a book, mm -hmm. and we hope that that would be uh, a way to attract the interest of relevant people and uh, disseminate uh, knowledge, information, good practices, recommendations that might be useful for future uh, planning and programming of initiatives tackling the informal uh, economy. I want to say that we, we are really thankful to the, uh, Donatella said that we are working on networking. Is it true? Because it's a, such a complex uh, uh, phenomenon that we, we cannot work alone. So uh, we, don't, uh, we don't think that we, we can produce research without relying on the organizations, uh, the institutions, the civil society organization, the local and national authorities working on, on this subject. And so we are very thankful, thankful to the well, 17 organizations, first of all, involved in the thematic program Investing in People. We've been in contact with them a lot and we've been asking them a lot of information about their projects. And all the other institutions, the DEFCO itself uh, and the P3 unit, the ILO, uh, other international organizations such as WIGO or universities. Uh, because this collective effort, uh, we think that it's the only way to produce material that can be bit more uh, reliable and useful for practitioners who have to face the, the challenge of uh, uh, working uh, and uh, improving the living condition of people uh, depending on the informal economy. Um, so before closing, uh, I would ask uh, Pierre if uh, during the webinar we have got uh, any, any questions. So maybe if there is any question for Jacques or for Donatello. Sure. Thank you, Pierre. We have had a lot of questions. Um, actually, more than uh, like around more than a dozen, so it will be difficult to answer. <laughs> it will be difficult to answer all of them. And I would like already I to think. mention that we will prepare a post on the ISF group to uh, reply to all the questions which have been asked. Uh, in the meantime, I have clustered some of the questions uh, which were uh, more or less going in the same direction. So I would like, um, I mean, I don't know how much time do we, I mean, we have like, in theory, like 10 minutes. So I would suggest- but maybe we can make on a bit more if, uh, if uh, needed, I think. Okay, so maybe uh, there were a lot of questions re regarding informal economy and women. There were also a question regarding informal economy and technology. And there were some questions about the tools and good practices which can could be used uh, to support uh, informal economy. I suggest to address these three types of questions and the other we will address them uh, on our blog, if it's okay for you. Okay, so, so Pierre, just, uh, okay. The first question is related to uh, women and informal economy. So yes. Uh, the question were, are women in general concentrated in specific sectors of the informal economy? And are there the ones with lower growth? Uh, are currently, is uh, women unpaid work also part of the informal economy? Wouldn't, is it counted as such? And uh, in terms of uh, value chain, uh, where are located women? Are they found in the lower nodes of the uh, informal economy? Jacques, you want to, to answer? So, um, informal economy and, uh, and women. Uh, of course, you know that uh, uh, there is an international network uh, who is uh, 
that is uh, working on this equation since uh, the the mid of the 1990s. It is uh, WIGO, Women in Informal Economy, Globalizing and uh, Organizing. And uh, uh, probably it would be good that uh, <coughs> uh, the people that have uh, asked this question uh, visit their website. Uh, so w-i-e-g-o.org. Uh, <coughs> Uh, as uh, as I have said, uh, women uh, globally are not uh, representing more than 50% of the labor force in uh, in uh, the informal economy. But it depends on uh, countries. In some countries, they are they outnumber men uh, in the informal economy, and in other uh, countries, uh, it is uh, the contrary. Uh, what is clear is that. Um, if you look at uh, the, the three major components of the informal economy, that is the micro businesses, uh, uh, informal uh, workers in the formal sector, and uh, informal workers in the households. They predominate uh, in uh, paid domestic services uh, in the households, of course. Um, they also predominate in the uh, among uh, the informal workers of the formal sector because it is uh, the low paid jobs uh, in the textile industries for instance or in the in the electronic uh, industries where uh, they are working uh, uh, in low paid job and uh, eventually at home in their home or home um, uh, and they are uh, less represented in uh, micro businesses. And in all uh, these components, well, in uh, the two components, uh, informal employment in the formal sector and micro businesses, they are more numerous in those uh, activities uh, which are low paid. especially textiles, uh, agriculture, if we count agriculture, uh, and uh, manufacturing industries and uh, services. Uh, the question about unpaid work, is unpaid work part or not of uh, the informal economy? Uh, unpaid contributing unpaid family workers are part part of the informal economy, of course, eh? because they are part of the labor force. But unpaid care work, that is uh, preparation of uh, meals, uh, um, uh, the care of the house, of the children, of the elderly, of uh, uh, the sick, uh, those unpaid services until now are not a part of uh, the GDP. They are not counted uh, uh, in the GDP. And the concepts of labor force are articulated on the concepts of national accounts. So uh, employment is uh, a concept that covers all the population that contributes to the production that is counted in the GDP. So as unpaid care services are not yet counted in uh, the GDP. Uh, uh, people, and especially women, uh, in unpaid care work are not part of uh, uh, the labor force and are not part of uh, employment in the informal economy. But in a broader uh, conception of the informal economy, of course, we can count uh, those unpaid care workers in uh, uh, the informal economy. And uh, we can even uh, count their contribution uh, to uh, the GDP. Uh, the system of national account of uh, uh, the United Nations system uh, is recommending to prepare a satellite account of unpaid uh, care work satellite account of uh, domestic production. And when we attempt the exercise, uh, 
uh, as I have done it uh, for some countries, you can see that uh, these unpaid care services uh, may account for uh, more than 50% of the current GDP, depending on the methodology that is used to uh, evaluate those activities. But uh, right now, uh, this unpaid work, unpaid care work, not counted uh, in uh, the informal economy. And uh, regarding value chains, uh, yes, women uh, are especially concentrated in the lower level of the value chain. And so uh, one of uh, uh, the tool and uh, good practice uh, uh, to be used in order to, uh, to promote uh, those uh, uh, activities, especially for women, is uh, to increase their share uh, in the global value chain. For instance, uh, there are interesting examples in Africa uh, about uh, the she nut uh, processing in Ghana and in other countries. But uh, uh, more generally, the global the value chain approach is uh, an interesting approach uh, to uh, tackle uh, the informal economy and especially women. Uh, in the informal economy uh, in uh, developing countries. Uh, regarding technology and the tools and the good practices, probably it will be the topic of uh, next webinar. Huh? Uh, but of course, the, the yeah. use of the, 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 the ICT's uh, use is, uh, is uh, clearly uh, very important uh, uh, for the informal economy and uh, uh, we have uh, very uh, interesting examples that uh, probably we should reserve for the next webinar. <laughs> Thank you, Jacques, for uh, this teaser of, uh, for the next webinar. So maybe people will be interested to, to follow us uh, on further uh, occasions. Uh, yes, as I said, I mean, it's, it's huge and complex and very interesting. So we have a lot of uh, questions. Uh, 1,000 questions, we said there, so it's a lot. Uh, what we could do, um, uh, Pierre, if you could put on, on the screen for, uh, for the participants uh, the details of our um, community of practice and the, the, exactly. So if you want to join the ISF group, uh, there, is a, uh, there is the link on Capacity for Dev, the platform of uh, the EU hosting uh, our group on the informal economy. All the material that we publish, uh, if it's uh, an article on a specific good practice, an entire research report, a new book, uh, this very same webinar, uh, or uh, we are going also to collect and disseminate recommendation uh, and a number of recommendation and good practice practices are already there. Uh, the, the training, I mean, the e-learning course that we are going to also uh, produce will be there and on DEFCO Academy. So uh, all these questions, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that there were a lot of questions and uh, that means that uh, there is an interest and we'll, we've been trying to produce material that, uh, that give an answer, I mean, to this interest. I don't know, Pierre, um, maybe if you are going to do, you said before that you're going to do a post uh, yes. in the future on... My, my proposition, yes. is seeing the interest, uh, all the questions we have, I mean, we don't have 100, we have like uh, maybe 10 or 20 questions. So uh, as a follow-up to this webinar on our uh, website, we will uh, post all the questions and we will uh, post uh, answers and also maybe materials, resources we have on our website to, to address the, the questions which are raised. And uh, we can, of course, continue this discussion on uh, the, the blog of uh, this website of the Community of Practice of the Informal Economy. Perfect, Pierre. And also, uh, talking about material, uh, now we are going to disseminate to our participants uh, two documents. One uh, is uh, very brief. Uh, I mean, uh, the presentation that Jacques just did, uh, it's a bit expanded with uh, the points that he analyzed during his presentation. It's a PowerPoint uh, with 2021 slides. 
And then there is a, a, a research uh, report uh, on the definition of the informal economy, where you find uh, all the findings, the material that we, we produced so far. Uh, it's, uh, it's a document that also contains references. So if you want them to, to go uh, analyze a certain specific topic that you're interested in, there, are, there is a reference, uh, a list of reference at the end. And uh, this material is already available on our on our capacity for deaf group, but we're going to distribute it now. And I think that Pierre will ask uh, also, uh, will send you also a very quick uh, survey on, on this webinar. It's just very 10 structure questions. So uh, I would appreciate if you could give us a feedback because we, we like also to improve what we do and this is a very interesting tool at a webinar because of course you don't need to stay in the same place at the same time not being in the same place it's a bit weird in order to get the feedback you don't really know what your participants uh, uh, think about what you're doing so at least this survey is, is a tool to get uh, feedback from you uh, I want to thank you very much, uh, Donatella Gobbi and Jacques Charme, for being here and uh, the presentation of Jacques. I think it was very interesting and dense. And uh, I hope to see uh, the participants uh, on the occasion of uh, the future webinars. And thank you, Pierre, for your uh, technical assistance and taking care of everything as usual. And so goodbye and uh, have a nice day, everyone.